So now we want to use the previous proposition to prove the analog of Jordan curve theorem. So if you are given an embedding of uh, SK into SN, you know where K is less than N, so you are embedding a smaller sphere into a larger sphere and then you take this embedding out. Yeah, then you subtract this embedding out then the reduced homology group is SN minus HSK this thing is integers for I equals to N minus K minus 1 yeah And uh, if i is not n minus k minus 1, then it is 0. So otherwise it is 0. Okay, so this uh, thing is actually equivalent to the Jordan curve theorem. So what you do is, we just take S2 and R2 as the same because you can map take a point out of S2 and map it homeomorphically to R2 so whatever we say in S2 is equivalent to or in some sense equivalent to in R2 so you can project whatever we draw on S2 to R2 so this is S2 then you draw a loop onto it yeah so loop on the surface so you've drawn this loop so this loop is nothing but a embedding yeah because you can see you have taken a circle and uh, deformed it to form this loop so this is the embedding which is given by the yellow portion yeah so the theorem says that hi tilde for s2 minus hs1 this is just the integers for i equals to 0 yeah that is clear because yeah here k is 1 so i is equal to 2 minus 2 which is 0 so what does this mean so this means that in particular the reduced group h0 s2 minus hs1 is equal to z plus z yeah so if you don't put the tilde sign on it it is z plus z so h0 tilde s2 minus hs1 equals to z is equal to h0 s2 minus hs1 equal to z plus z now the z plus z means that this s2 is separated into two different path components yeah and these two components are path connected and complementary each of them producing the corresponding z so h0 is z plus z or h0 tilde is just a single z so this is what the Jordan curve theorem is. Yeah. So you draw a loop. This makes S2 into two separate path connected components, which is given by the H0 homology. So let us write the proof. So proof is by induction on K. So you take K as zero. So, say, so this is Sn, not Sn minus 1. I will uh, correct it later. So Sn minus Hs0. So again, note on the left side, it should be Sn, not Sn minus 1. And on the right side, it is fine. It is Sn minus 1 times R. Yeah, so this is true. Yeah, for an example, I will show you. Take S2 as sphere. And this S2, you take hs0 out take two points out yeah so this is equivalent to this s1 times r which is a cylinder so obviously s1 times r it's easier to compute because it homotopically or a deformation retracts into s1 so obviously if a deformation retracts into um, S1 or Sn minus 1. So from Sn we have gone to Sn minus 1. 
again instead of sn minus 1 h is 0 you should think of it as sn minus h is 0 I have written it incorrectly I will correct it later now we want from 0 h is 0 we want to go to hsk so right sphere is a union of its upper and lower hemisphere yeah so we are producing two disks now you can already imagine that we are using these two disks because now we want to use the proposition somewhere so we have the upper hemisphere and lower hemisphere and their intersection is just the equator sk minus 1 Yeah, so from the first step itself we can say so Sn minus Hs0 equal to Sn minus 1 times R. So you can see the homology groups there exactly ag agree with what we have written in B. So for we want to again use Meyer White Torus. So we have to construct two sets A and B precisely as we constructed before. So A will be Sn minus H of the upper hemisphere yeah obviously the homology group of this is 0 from part A and B again the homology group will be 0 but this is SN minus lower hemisphere yeah so A union B is SN minus HSK So by Meyer Vitoris, this is what we get. Here we have A union B. Yeah, so A union B will be this. As you can see, the union of the disk is SK. So this is oh sorry, A intersection B. and the second part is A union B yeah so K minus 1 so yeah this this was clear because of the negative sign in front of H the embedding part this is A intersection B yeah so you have A intersection yeah that is pretty much it yeah so I will just correct this and now you can see you know you have reduced the dimension by 1 here and then you just copy it further copy all the way up now we want to use a result on the previous slide to prove the following theorem here yeah, this is an importance theorem that there is no continuous injection from Rm to Rn where M is greater than N that is for example we cannot have a continuous injection from R2 to R1 or R3 to R2 so from any larger space to lower space we cannot have a continuous injection and uh, to prove this result we will use the proof on the previous slide and we will apply it to this map from H SN to SN so in the previous slide we were talking about embeddings here we are trying to say H SN to SN and we will try to prove that this map is always on to that is there is no other option but this map to be on to so notice this was the following Meyer White Aura sequence we had in dimension 0. This is from the previous case. Yeah, we take SK as SK as N, so SK minus 1 would be N minus 1. So A and B were upper and lower hemispheres homotopic or which detract uh, which retract to a point so they are zero now this would imply that this part is also zero now obviously that is not true because uh, this will contradict the Jordan curve theorem
so therefore how do we resolve this contradiction yeah we want it to be z yeah so reduced homology is z that means uh, just homology h0 will be z plus c each representing one path component so the solution obviously lies in appending the yeah by appending this sequence yeah sn minus 1 so you have the sequence you append it with the null set yeah so you go to dimension minus 1 so obviously we have seen that a union b is sn minus 1 so this has to be a intersection b so we want a intersection b to be null set just to remind what was a a was nothing but sn minus the upper hemisphere and b was nothing but sn minus the lower hemisphere so a intersection b is always the equator now once you know the equator for example in s2 this a intersection b was nothing but s1 so that is nothing but the equator and that gives us a lot of uh, relief because then we can say the equator which is a circle in dimension minus one it is just the null set yeah and this will be equal to z this is by assumption so but why would it be the null set it will be the null set only if this map h is on to because if this map h is not on to then uh, yeah then we have a problem because uh, then we cannot simply take out the yeah we cannot simply take out what we have uh, written so sn cannot be embedded in rn So yeah, because it will essentially yield a map or an embedding H which is not surjective. So we have shown that the map H has to be surjective precisely because we want a null set in dimension minus 1 and that null set will happen only if we have A intersection B as the null set in minus 1 which will be true only if the map H is surjective. So yeah, think of stereographic projection here. Yeah? So if you take a point out of Rn, then obviously the map from Sn to Sn as shown uh, will not be surjective. Yeah? So stereographic projection is from Sn to Rn. So the consequence is what we started with, that there is no continuous injection from Rm to Rn for m greater than n. So yes, yeah, so the only trick here is to see how this null set comes about. Why A intersection B is the null set. So if you are able to see why A intersection B is the null set, everything else is just trivial. So this will, I mean, this is now explained itself. Otherwise we will have to, uh, we will have a non surjective map from SN to SN. So you know, take SN embedded, uh, embedded into RM, which will embed into RN, which will embed into SN. So we will have a non-surjective map from SN to SN. Yeah. So first take SN, which will uh, obviously embed into RM, and this will embed into RN, which will embed into SN. So we will have SN to SN, a non-subjective map, which is a contradiction. So that is pretty much it.